America is turning more and more Asian, and we got all the stats to prove it. But how do you feel about it? I don't know, man. It went from Jessica Simpson to Jessica Alba, and now it's Jessica Tran. Let's run the clip. How Asian is your Costco? <laughs> Level one, the freezer has tons of BB Go stuff. The sauce department has bachans, and all the pharmacists are Asian. Level two, there is 10 different types of rice, and they're all at least 25 pounds. This is where you start getting really interesting snacks. These turtle chips are amazing, Vietnamese coffee, and this Korean pork jerky. We're going up to level three, where on the weekends you barely see a white person. This is where you start seeing regionalized foods like different types of kimchi, soup dumplings, Japanese distillery whiskeys, PP beer, and whole refrigerator sections dedicated to Korean, Chinese, and Japanese foods. Ramen sections have huge variety including Indomie and then you have a lot of Korean ones like Buldak and Shin Ramen. Finally at level 4, this is shot during Chinese New Year. There's a whole section dedicated to Chinese New Year products including decorate your own dragon themed cookies. There is bird's nest soup, fully cooked pompano, fish roll, and finally high luxury items like this Louis Vuitton travel bag. Did I miss any levels? Thanks for watching. Boom! Yo, Andrew! How Asian is Costco getting? Wow, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's the Alhambra, California Costco one that I've been to many, many times. But literally, it could be anywhere in California, really. Yeah, I would say that's gotta be in an Asian zone. That's definitely not in Montana, by the way, but I would say Southern California. Yep, let's like take a look at all these headlines that are trending over the past several years. Andrew, localize it. Asian growth has been booming in US metros, Andrew. Since 1990, Andrew, the Asian population in America has tripled so we're gonna Whoa. break it down we got the stats guys make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications check out small ass sauce at small sauce.com available for pre-order guys it goes great on everything um yeah let's just take a quick look andrew most asians live in california mm -hmm. new york or new jersey right but there are growing populations andrew in texas washington uh obviously the virginia area and a little bit of Florida. Mm. Of course, Hawaii has been Asian for a long time as well. Um, so yeah, we got to take a look at this. America's fastest dem growing demographic groups, Andrew. Boom. Overall, the population went up uh, 330 million since uh, 2000. I mean, it, it's up 18% since two, 2000. Uh, white people were up 19%. Hispanic were up 80%. Black was up 31%, Andrew. And Asian has is up... 104 percent dang 104 percent that's beyond an a plus right 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 so i guess andrew in terms of the change asians had the biggest jump but also and we got to be clear here it's possible because the asian numbers prior were so small right so what do you mean like that they weren't counted before or that just Asians had so much growth. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Overcome. I guess what I'm saying is when you're a really small population, it's way easier to grow like in multiples. Right, because they're going by percentage here, not just numbers. But Right, right, right. So anyway, guys, let's take a look at some of the breakdown. Um, the biggest change in California, Andrew, was a bunch of Nepalese, Singaporeans, Mongolians, and Bengalis. That's really interesting. But yeah, I mean, everybody's been increasing. Obviously, it's like when you're, you know, a smaller group and even like, you know, 5,000 more come over, that's even a significant uh, increase. Right, you're saying the same thing that is responsible for Asians' gigantic percentage increase is also probably responsible for Nepalese's gigantic percentage right, increase. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, for small groups, it's way easier to hit that multiplication factor mathematically. Um, ethnic populations in the U.S. total. Andrew, in 2024, Asian Indian has surpassed Chinese at 4.4 million. There are a lot of Indians in America, man. And, and I think that there's not as many Indian restaurants or Indian markets, uh, but there are a lot of Indian people. Right. Um, Chinese comes in next at 4.1 million. Not surprised. Number three, Filipino. Uh, Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, Pakistani, Hmong, Cambodian, and then Taiwanese. Mm. To be honest, I was kind of surprised that Hmong was that high up there. Shout out to the Hmong. Yeah. Um, also, Andrew, Asian and white, if it was an ethnic group, if you could group all hoppers, specifically- What do you mean like mixed Asian and white? Yeah. If Asians could be their own ethnic group, they would be the fourth largest ethnic group of Asians below a Filipino, Whoa. And, but higher than Vietnamese and Koreans. So it goes to show you, there are clearly a ton of Asians out there. Yeah. 
Um, here are some of the income statistics. Here's how it breaks down. It breaks down by uh, citizen, naturalized citizen, U.S. born citizen. Interestingly enough, Andrew, the highest income earners in America are naturalized non-citizen Indians. Mm. Basically, but I can see why, because those are going to be Indians with graduate school degrees that are brought over here to do software engineering, possibly right, right, right. for Microsoft and things like that. Um, somebody said, where do Asians choose to live? Here is a map breakdown. Like we said, it is mostly the Northeast, the West Coast. But Andrew, growing is Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Arizona. Uh, this spot map uh, of each Asian ethnicity here that we're going to be looking at is kind of interesting. Um, I would say, so Chinese, this is the concentrations of Chinese people. Kind of dispersed Indian. everywhere except the Midwest, right? I don't know. They're pretty in there. When, in but, Montana, uh, Colorado. Uh, what, what is that? The is Northwest, that? wherever this zone is, this patch is missing right here. But I don't think anybody lives there. Uh, Indians are actually, considering how many Indians are there are, there's not that many like super big dark patches. I guess they're just kind of sprinkled everywhere, especially in the Northeast. Uh, Filipinos heavily on the West Coast. Vietnamese, Vietnamese kind of. I would say mostly in Texas yeah. and SoCal. I'd say the Vietnamese and Korean map kind of looks similar to the Chinese one as well. Uh, Japanese map, yes, mostly West Coast. Um, and then really, once you get into Pakistani, Hmong, obviously really centered in Central California, Minnesota. Um, Cambodian was really centered in SoCal as well. Seattle had a lot as well. And I don't know. What, what is that part of SoCal where it's like across from LA? What is that? San Diego? It's like San Diego, but on the inland You mean side. more like an inland empire or more like... Is that inland empire? Maybe. I don't know. For Laotian and Thai Palms, people. Po potentially Palm Springs or uh, something like that. Interesting. Uh, Anyways, guys. Um, David, I think the larger question is not that people don't believe the stats, right? But I guess like... How do people feel about it? Because uh, America is just becoming more diverse, but obviously a lot more Asian items. There's a lot more Asian food companies. We started our own Smala Sauce. We're just joining this whole Asian wave of Asian products that you can now buy, I guess. So like, what, what else do you have to say? I think that it's really interesting to see that Costco's are becoming that Asian. Obviously, Asians really, really love Costco. That's why Costco's going to like over cater to Asians. Right. right. We made a whole video about why Costco's love Asians in depth. You can uh, right, right, watch right. it. Asians love Costco. Costco loves Asians, you know, I'm sure with the stock price and everything. But it's like, uh, I'd say that beyond food, I'd be interested to see what other dynamics take place, right? Because there's no clear political identity and there's no clear like cohesion between the groups right, right. now. Right, you're right that food-wise, 100%, it is clear as day that Asians are increasing, that Asian-inspired flavors are increasing, that Asian products, that they're importing more Asian snacks. But what else does that mean? Right, for example, Andrew, let's just take a look at the Av at UW used to have zero authentic Chinese restaurants. I did just did a Yelp search at the David, University this is of Washington. University Street in the, by our college yes, in Seattle. There's like 15 spots plus a Din Tai Fung nowadays. So literally these are 15 authentic mainland Chinese restaurants that did not exist at the University of Washington, uh, the Ave Street that used to exist. Obviously, so we were, we're saying that the food has changed. Um, let's just take a look at some of the questions. Andrew, some people said, I noticed that a lot of Asians, according to the heat map, live on the West Coast, the East Coast, a little bit of Texas. How come no, none of them seem to want to move to the Midwest? Uh, because it just doesn't have anything for us. What like, are, you why would, are you talking about mountains, the water? Do, do people want I mean, to be there are to There seafood? are Asians who run like the Chinese restaurants or the Asian restaurants out there, of course. And there are some markets sprinkled in there. But really what would appeal to Asians. Also, who's to say and, that those groups of people want to see a bunch of Asians? Right. I think that the economic opportunities, the educational opportunities that Asians are looking for typically are on the East, uh, I'm sorry, the East or the West Coast or potentially the South Coast in Texas. Yeah. And also, I think that the Midwest is too far from any international airports. So if you need to fly back to Asia, being in the center of America, it just like extends your trip by a lot. Yeah, I, I would say it really has to do more with the opportunities and the community base that could help them out. Obviously, like if you're really into college and school, there's going to be a lot more colleges in the dense areas on the coastlines. Um, there are, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Um, somebody said, how come Chinese and Indians seem spread out everywhere in America? Does it have to do with the fact that those are the two biggest countries in terms of overall population on earth? 
Yeah, I mean, Chinese will go anywhere that there's pretty much uh, some type of business or educational opportunity. You know what I think is really interesting is that the Chinese map and the Indian map of distribution look almost identical, but Chinese started coming to America in the late 1800s, whereas Indians started coming to America, I want to say, like, in mass numbers 50 years ago. Mm. So interesting and enough that the, the, the two maps almost look uh, juxtaposed on each other completely. Somebody said, uh, I noticed that the smaller Asian groups seem way more tight-knit in their distribution seems way more centered around uh, certain communities. That makes complete sense. Yeah, I do think also uh, the smaller groups are Southeast Asian. Southeast Asians, I think, tend to want to be more around their families and their cousins and stuff like that. Um, somebody said the one exception is Filipinos. Filipinos are a very large group in America, yet they group together um, a little bit more like smaller groups. Yeah, they've been around for a while and uh, they uh, do often come over with a lot more like better English. So then that allows them to kind of move around and, you know. Right, right, right. Somebody said Southeast Asians value family closeness a lot more and warmth. East Asian families are more cold and more economic opportunity based. In generalities, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody just said, man, I've never seen a population triple since 1990. That is a gigantic jump. But somebody said, well, it kind of shows me that there's still a pretty small minority, though, because Asians aren't that big in America, and they already tripled. So it goes to kind of show you how little representation there was in 1990. David, do you think given the amount of Asians in America, which is still not considered very much about, you know, 5 6% of America? Well, well, you could argue if you combine certain groups though it's 7.4 percent right now okay so 7.4 percent i guess that's not really wrong i mean that's seven let's say let's say seven percent do you think the asian influence culturally is punching above its weight or below its weight right now as I far would, as asian culture i would say in some fields like sports which are more like midwest centric probably lower than seven percent but in certain fields like tech and medicine Way over 7%, maybe like 27%. I would say, as far as food, tech, and medicine, I think Asians are punching above that 7%. So well, they are disproportionately represented because I think they do, they excel in those areas, to be honest. Right, you're saying that those are the fields that Asians are like universally known for being good at. Yeah, I mean, just in colleges in general, STEM fields and cooking broccoli stems. Yeah, no, like... Right. <laughs> like uh, Basically, food and STEM. Food and STEM. I mean, I don't know. Food and STEM, Asians are like... Right. You can argue be. that the representation in those fields, let's just mark it at 7%, is arguably triple or potentially yeah. even quadruple. Yeah, and here's the thing about food. It's probably way over 7 It probably feels like it affects like 25% of food because Asian food doesn't involve Asian people always. It can just be Asian flavors and Asian products. Yeah. Anybody can deliver Asian food to someone else and they don't have to be actually an right. Asian Take person. Take a look at who's running the walk at a Panda Express in 2024. Yeah, it's they're not, not Asian. Always, yeah. yeah, Panda Express is an Asian restaurant, but most of the people working there are not Asian. Yep, so Andrew, here I have a couple questions. Since the Asian population is booming so much across America, obviously other groups are as well. Other than food, Andrew, what will happen to the USA with an increasing Asian population? Do you have any guesses or... You just thinking the food is really where you're going to see it be represented. Ooh, um, yeah, I think because Asian music, what is known to be Asian music, like as in like K-pop, K-dramas, or K-pop obviously is influential, but I don't think it's going to come back and influence American music as much. I think K-pop music will just become- Almost exists as an alternative, right? Yeah, or, or we'll just can start, aspects of it will just sound more and more like American music. Um, um, I guess in Asian leadership, I guess in politics, I could see Asians increasing. That makes sense to me. Somebody was saying that the fact that obviously Simu was able to play Shang-Chi and a Marvel superhero and all the Asian increase in Asian representation in Hollywood is due to these demographic increases. Uh, yeah, I guess it all comes together. Uh, number two, is there a cohesive political identity? No. Long no. story short. Long story short. No, I don't think there is. I think there are Asians who are conservative. I think there are Asians who are liberal. There's Asians who are in the middle. I think, I don't know how it splits up. I will say this, wise. I think when it comes to family, family values, Asians are more maybe potentially guys, don't kill me for this. I'm just saying 
honestly, this is my honest triangulation, middle right. However, that doesn't mean they're going to vote for the right. Yeah, because yeah, Because they yeah. don't like the identity politics. They're not into fighting wars overseas and funding all this military industrial complex, big pharma, corporatocracy. Those are the other things that are going to make Asians, basically, that probably both sides believe in, that they're just going to be like, I'm just going to opt out and think yeah, about I, me and I my mean, family. Listen, Asians are not the most political people, so they're not usually on the extreme ends. And most people in general are not on the extreme ends. So Asians definitely fall somewhere in the middle. Very, very moderate people. Generally very moderate. And then my last question is, is there a cohesive cultural identity, not a political one? Uh, I think in a way more and more so, I think the pan-Asian-ness, if you ask me, is like, like with all the meme pages and people keeping up with each other, people know the differences in like the different... Asian ethnic foods more now because everybody's more educated. Right. So you don't want to get that mixed up, but people also kind of view themselves maybe a little bit more united than they right. used to. You're saying like if there's a comedy show and it's Hassan hanging out with Ronnie Chang, hanging out with like Joe Coy, now you're going to just have like all the different Asians. You're going to have East Asian, Southeast Asian, South Asian, yeah. all hanging out together. I also and hopefully I'll say this. I don't feel like, some Asian Americans, they definitely do a lot of research on their own motherland culture as well as others, but other people might do no research and other Asians might only research the type of Asian that they are and not other Asians. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I just also think a growing number of Asians are all cool with being like, hey man, we're all Asian and we're different though. We're different. We're different, but we can all hang out. We're all Asian. Right, right, right. The only things that immediately, visually, I would say that we share all together is we take off shoes when we enter the house and we probably eat rice. Like that is the two things that bond East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia all together. Oh yeah, I mean everybody likes K-pop and sushi and pho and uh, Thai food. Everybody loves Thai food. Thai food might be the real center I, triangulation. I think everybody loves Thai food. All Asians and maybe all people, but definitely all and Asians. And I would say everybody loves Japanese food too, but not necessarily sushi. Because if you're more like an inland Asian, you'd probably not eat with the that's raw true. fish. That's true. That's really interesting. It's really like the two extreme foods because Thai food has a ton of flavor. It's spicy, sour, fishy, and everything. And then Japanese food is really light and, and classy also and clean. And Thai food has a lot of Indian influence. Yeah. So Thai food's kind of like the top, I guess like you know, Southeast Asian cuisine, I guess, and Japan, <laughs> Japanese food kind of symbolizes like the top East Asian like society to people. I don't know. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think is coming with the uh, current and ongoing Asian population boom in the U.S. What does it mean to you? What did you guys think of some of the charts that we popped up? Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.